This video looks at US high points by state. For many, I'll say something about why that high point exists. For example, in much of the US East, high points relate to ancient tectonic collisions and the subsequent arrangement of different rock types, with stronger, more resistant rocks being associated with topographic highs. In Midwestern states, continental glaciation scoured the landscape and left piles of glacial debris that make up some high points. In the West, high points associated with more recent tectonics and volcanic processes. So let's get started going from lowest to highest. Number 50, Florida. The lowest high point at only 345 feet is not very exciting. The majority of the US population, about 60%, lives above this state high point. Number 49, Delaware. Not much of a high point or site of interest, just the side of the road near the state border with Pennsylvania. Number 48, Louisiana. Here the high point is made up of non-marine quartz sands that overlie weaker marine deposits. Number 47, Mississippi, near the northeast corner of the state. This is an area capped by more resistant rock, in this case sandstone, than the surrounding area. Number 46, Rhode Island, an attractive forest site with a big boulder comprising the high point location. Uh, number 45 is Illinois, our first high point over a thousand feet, the first inland state. And here we start a streak of Midwestern states. This corner of Illinois is in the driftless area that avoided glacier erosion that flattened much of the surrounding Midwest. 44 is Indiana, near the eastern edge of the state, a glacial moraine deposits. So that is piled up material left behind by the continental ice sheets. Number 43, Ohio also a moraine deposit. Number 42, Iowa, another glacial moraine up at the northern edge of the state. 41 is Missouri. This high point is associated with very ancient volcanic activity that occurred well over a billion years ago. 40, New Jersey. Here, near the northernmost point of the state, is a sedimentary rock rich in quartz, which is very resistant to weathering. 39, Wisconsin, on a thick accumulation of glacial debris over top Canadian Shield bedrock. 38, Michigan, a granitic rock peak of the Canadian Shield, heavily sculpted by continental glaciations with much terrain covered by glacial till. 37, Minnesota, first over 2,000 feet, also a glacially sculpted granitic rock peak of the Canadian Shield. 36, Connecticut, on the state line on a mountainside with its actual peak to the north outside the state. This high point is composed of metamorphic rock. It is part of the Appalachians and thus associated with old North American plate collisions on the east side of the continent. 35, Alabama. Here, meta sandstone and quartzite rock surface rocks have high erosional resistance, resulting in raised topography. This is the high point closest to the mean elevation of the US. It's less than 100 feet below that mean. 34, Arkansas, a sandstone capped plateau high point associated with a mountain system that trends mostly east-west, unlike most US ranges. It's related to ancient North and South American plate collision. And we're up to an elevation now where only about 5% of the US population lives above. 33, Pennsylvania, first high point over 3,000 feet situated atop a long resistant sandstone ridge of the Appalachian Mountains. 32, Maryland. This site is close to the border with West Virginia atop another long resistant ridge of the Appalachians. 31, Massachusetts. Here in the Northern Appalachians, rocks consist of relatively high grade metamorphic and igneous rocks with great resistance to weathering and thus rise above adjacent areas of lower grade metamorphic and sedimentary rock. 30, North Dakota, our first western state. Here a sandstone capped peak is within heavily eroded sedimentary rocks of this upper Great Plains region. Number 29, South Carolina. Back to the Appalachians and up against the North Carolina boundary, granite that originally formed this mountain has metamorphosed into gneiss, the highest grade metamorphic rock type. Number 28, Kansas. First peak over 4,000 feet, 
near the border of Colorado, not a prominent peak at all, just have a state with a dominant topographic gradient from central lowlands to high plains going east to west, which you can see on this relief map. Number 27, Kentucky. Back to the Appalachians again, near the Virginia border, another sedimentary rock ridge, here quite rich in coal. Number 26, Vermont. Back in moderately high-grade metamorphics of the northern Appalachians at this high point that still has remnants of alpine tundra. At this halfway point, let's see what higher terrain still remains across the country. There's a few more high peaks in the northern Appalachians. It's hard to make out these very small areas. There are a few larger peak areas in the southern Appalachians. But look how much terrain in the west still lies above our middle-ranked Vermont high point. Of course, there's the high Sierra Nevada, Cascade, and Rocky Mountain ranges, all of which we gain to soon in our high point countdown, but also high, broad areas too, like the Colorado Plateau and much of the Basin and Range region. Number 25, Georgia. At the north end of the state, in the Appalachians, where thrust faults expose a variety of resistant rocks once buried deeply in these mountains. Number 24, West Virginia, part of another one of these long, major sedimentary rock ridges of the central Appalachians. Number 23, Oklahoma, up in the northwest corner of the state, mesas are flat-topped hills left by erosion around horizontal rock layering. This high point mesa is capped by a basalt lava flow less than 5 million years old from a volcano located in Colorado. Number 22, Maine. First peak over 5,000 feet, this mountain formed from a large granite intrusion eroded to the surface. Number 21, New York, another granitic massive peak here in the heart of the Adirondack High Peaks region. Number 20, Nebraska, very similar to Kansas, with a high point located almost on the Colorado border in a western corner of the state, terminating the state's long east-west elevational gradient. Number 19, Virginia. Tucked in the corner of the state, this mountain contains a set of rocks that is about 30% sedimentary and 70% volcanic, with the volcanics forming the hard resistant rock that holds up the peak. Number 18, New Hampshire. This high point is most famous for its long-held world record for the highest measured wind speed not within a tornado or a tropical cyclone, an astonishing 231 miles per hour. Number 17, Tennessee. Near the eastern edge of the state, this Appalachian peak consists of a variety of hard, metasedimentary rocks. Number 16, North Carolina, the highest point east of the Mississippi. This impressive eastern mountain formed during the Precambrian when marine deposits were metamorphosed into gneiss and other high-grade metamorphic rocks. These rocks were later uplifted during an immense continental collision that was part of the great geological mountain-forming events that created the long Appalachian mountain chain. Number 15, South Dakota. Only western states now for the rest of our countdown. This peak is part of a granite dome uplifted to form the interesting Black Hills region, the same granite seen at Mount Rushmore. Number 14, Texas. We're now at a part of our series where elevations increase more quickly, with this being the first of three in a row, with over 1,000 foot increase from the previous state. Faulting 20 to 30 million years ago uplifted a large, beautifully preserved fossil reef to form this limestone high point. Number 13, Oregon, first over 10,000 feet, and a beautiful example of a stratovolcano. Part of the Cascade Volcanic Arc formed from the tectonic subduction zone along most of the U.S. West Coast. It is still active. Most recent eruption, 1865. Number 12, Arizona, now an interior state stratovolcano, this one being extinct and highly eroded. Its last eruption occurred about 400,000 years ago. Number 11. Idaho. The steeply tilting limestone layers of this high point were, incredibly, raised by about a foot just in 1983 by a magnitude 6.9 earthquake. Number 10, Montana. Near the state's southern border in the Beartooth Mountains, this peak is an impressive complex of granite and gneiss more than 2 billion years old. Number 9, Nevada. It's actually a sub-peak to a higher summit less than one mile away in California. Granitic and part of the White Mountains, which is a fault block mountain range formed by extensional tectonics. Number eight, New Mexico. 
in the northern part of the state, in the southernmost subrange of the Rocky Mountains, this peak up is made up of uplifted, high-grade metamorphics. Number seven, Utah. Uplifted metasedimentary rocks in the Uinta subrange of the Rockies that is unusual as the highest range in the contiguous U.S. oriented in the east-west direction. Number six, Hawaii, an extraordinary high point of an enormous young shield volcano formed from hotspot volcanism way out in the Pacific. It's the tallest mountain on our planet when measured from its underwater base. Number five, Wyoming, only an eight foot step up to this inland state high point in the beautiful Wind River Range. The Continental Divide follows the crest of this primarily granitic range. Number four, Washington, an imposing glaciated stratovolcano in the Cascade Range of the Pacific Northwest and the tallest peak of the Cascade Volcanic Arc. This stratovolcano has a high probability of eruption in the near future and is considered one of the world's most dangerous volcanoes. Number three, Colorado, a mountain composed largely of quartzite with a summit ridge of pre-Cambrian metamorphics. This is the highest high point of the Rocky Mountains, the largest mountain system of North America. The Rockies were formed by contractional tectonics when a number of plates slid beneath the North American plate at a shallow angle of subduction, resulting in a broad belt of thrusted and folded mountain ranges. Number two, California. Like the previous two peaks, another 14er, this one being the highest mountain of the contiguous U.S. The uplifted granite forming this peak is part of the Sierra Nevada Batleth, a huge mass of solidified molten rock originating from subduction. The east mountain slope is far steeper than the west because the entire range is made up of a slightly tilted fault block. So this is then a near final map of high points of the United States. However, there is one more monster of a peak we can't forget about. Let's zoom up to Alaska. By far, the biggest vertical step up in our sequence at a staggering 20,310 feet, the world-famous Denali is the highest peak of the entire continent. Denali is a granitic pluton that has been lifted by tectonic pressures from the subduction of the Pacific Plate beneath the North American Plate in this most geologically active part of the country. As it has been lifted, sedimentary material above and around the mountain was stripped away by erosion, especially by glacial activity. Canada also has an extraordinary high mountain in this same tectonic region called Mount Logan. An interesting question is whether there is a relation between high point height and difficulty to climb. I found a nice effort scale analysis by VAMAN798, see video text for sources, and there is a pretty good fit. Denali is ranked by far the most difficult because of its extreme height above the Alaskan plain, high altitude, high latitude, and so very cold glacier snow cover, remoteness, it just has so many significant technical challenges to climb. Most low coastal high points, and some up many thousands of feet, have really good road access and are thus silly, easy. Hawaii is the largest outlier on the relatively easy considering its height side. A road goes much of the way up and there's a maintained trail. Also shield volcanoes have gentle side slopes. Other high points on the relatively easy side are mostly accessible by easy to only moderately difficult trails. Wyoming is the largest outlier on the relatively hard considering its height side because of its remoteness, large elevation gain, and it requires a wide variety of mountaineering skills to climb. Others on the relatively hard side have some similar challenges and in fact could be debatable if Wyoming is actually more difficult than Montana and Washington's high point. The New York peak is accessed by relatively long rough trail and the main peak also requires some scrambling to the summit. So kind of a fun analysis with so much variability among these high points.